Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your screen is being shared. Nimesh? Yeah. Started recording. Ha, sir, okay. proceed, sir. Proceed. Ah, okay. Okay. On Sri Kunji's instruction, I'm drinking water. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Earlier, a stable osteolysis classification, which is Robash, which I told you, one of the greatest work, uh, Bill Harris and Robash from Mass General Hospital, Boston, has worked, worked very hard. So, what is this? Type 1, stable socket. Socket is stable. Cup, no malposition, antiversion normal, uh, inclination normal, locking mechanism is intact, metal shell is intact, new liner with adequate thickness, and implant track record is good. And it is a modular implant because I told, I just now showed you non-modular implant, I was not able to do it. So, modular implant. So, good track record, cup is not malposition, locking mechanism is good, and you should be able to ask that company, because this has done 15, 20 years back, you have to know the record, you have to find out from the patient sticker, what sticker, you have to write down to the company that I need this size and this is the type of locking mechanism, if you don't have, you are in trouble, and today we are lucky that the surgeons, that every company responds and they get the, within three weeks, they get an implant, they get the polyliner and you can, uh, the operation becomes very easy, very easy. Those companies, those companies are completely stopped their manufacturing, then you'll have to take out the complete stabulum and it is a massive surgery. So track record, important, sticker, important and company support is very important. That's why today registry is very, very important. If you have registry, you can just speak to registry that this is the patient, this is the date of surgery. The registry will give you exact what is the implant, what is the size, which company and everything. Within just five minutes, it is possible. Patient can approach, surgeon can approach the registry. So importance of registry is very important for documentation. And all of you, just for your information, the Indian Society of Hip and Knee Surgeons, ISHK, has a database, has a registry in place. The office is in Ahmedabad. People can contact us and we should be able to provide them adequate information if data is put inside. Unfortunately, only 20% of the surgeons are putting their data into registry and we need to increase the contribution from the, all the surgeons, then only it will work. Okay. So type one treatment, I told you what is the requirement. Retain the shell, liner exchange, grafting if it is required. If the lesion is very large, you do grafting. If the lesion is small, don't worry. A failed locking mechanism, suppose the locking mechanism is failed and Patient is very elderly, size is large. Then you can, on the last moment, you can, what you can do inside the metal, you take a high speed burr, rough on the inside shell, and then just put a cement liner. Mm -hmm. But this is for young, this is only for elderly patient. The evidence is good. And then only two or three. So this is my own patient, very heavy patient, fisherman. 2003, I had done this surgery of this gentleman at Bombay. And he came after 2011. Look at this eccentric wear. And look around this cruise, there is an osteolytic area. Osteolytic area. So this company, I wrote to this company. Within three weeks, I got a liner and the surgery was so simple, 45 minutes. Otherwise, to take out this implant is not, this is all spot welded implant. It is impossible to take it out. And CT is a gold standard. So I know where the trap door entry has to be. Look at the city. Look at the lesions. Look at the lesions. Fortunately, there was no pelvic dissociation. Fortunately, there was no pelvic. This fellow was a very heavy man as a fisherman. A tough, very tough tissues. But there was a lot of trochanteric osteolysis. Look at the trochanter. And during the procedure, I fractured the trochanter. So look at this. It's fractured. I left it. I thought there was a fibrous union. Fortunately, healed. 
and I took out the liner and put a new liner. Now the liner is nice, there is no eccentricity and there's a follow-up of two years. And I luckily got a CT scan after post, uh, post vision and look at the lesions have healed. Lesions have healed. So this is the way a uh, little bit trap door entry and the grafts. This is a patient recently operated um, by us. The very young, young girl, this is a, you look at this eccentric wear on both the sides. She was totally asymptomatic. Luckily, she came to the follow-up follow clinic and minor discomfort she had. She said, there's something wrong, doctor, which I can't explain. Luckily, we picked up, look at the lesion here. Luckily, on the x-ray, the lesions are picked up, but we need, these are the osteolytic lesion. There are no screws, still the lesions are then. So that is not necessary that the screw has to be there. So that's why today, whether you put a screw or don't put, doesn't matter. Initially, we thought along the screw, the osteolysis will take place, the particles will, yeah, because they, they get a channel to work. So this is a bilateral. The other side was not much osteolytic lesion, but this side was a much more, left side was a much more osteolytic lesion. On a CT scan, look at the lesion there, big lesion there, big lesion on the side, and that's another view of the CT scan. So this is the way we picked up. We know where exactly now the trap door entry has to be. So this is on the table. Uh, on the table, this is the poly, uh, the poly which we had to take it out. So you must know which company the poly is because everybody has a different extractor. So this is the special extractor, which uh, otherwise is very difficult to sometimes to take out the poly. So we need to an extractor. This is jack mechanism which is used for the extractor and just you can pull it out. This the, there was an inside fibrous layer was inside inside the underneath underneath which we took it out and we made a trap door entry here. We made a small trap door window here and through that you see this is a morselized beautiful graft very beautifully washed and graft but how to put this graft because it's a very small area we can't make a large area. So you need a special instrument, we need a funnel. So we put a funnel, first what we do, there's a lot of osteolytic area here inside. So we put a jet lavage inside and a lot of material, debris comes out. So at least half a liter, we have to use a jet lavage or if you don't have a jet lavage, you take a syringe and break the needle and keep the part of the needle inside and you inject with a 50 cc syringe with a very high level of force the whole material just washed out and comes out. This is one of the trick, important trick, which is not described in the book. So uh, we, took, we take out all the material and you, we use the funnel. So we put the funnel and then put a graft inside and through the funnel, there is an obturator and a cannula. We push the graft inside. You can use an H, see that the every graft, everything is filled up and look at the grafting, which is completely filled osteolytic area. We used the image on that day and just saw that everything is filled up very nicely. And I put a, actually, uh, this lady, I put a ceramic head, a ceramic head, and I put a highly cross poly. I hope it will work for 15 years. That is type one. Again, track record good, implant well positioned, good spot welding, locking mechanism is good, it has not damaged, so everything is fine. Alignment is good. Type two. Stable socket, but does not fit in the criteria one. That means there is a malalignment, locking mechanism gone, something is wrong there, so you can't do this. You, this will require cup revision. If alignments are not good, locking mechanism is not good, you can't do that procedure. So this patient was a, my, operated by my colleague in Mumbai. Look at the cup, it's 70 degrees, vertical cup. So this is malaligned cup. Locking mechanism was good, spot welding was good, but I cannot put a new liner inside. It will again start subluxating in the wear. Look at the wear. Because of the vertical cup, all this area has completely broken, broken, broken. To remove this cup, you need a special instruments. If you use osteotome gouge, you will develop a pelvic dissociation. These are well fixed cups. There is a special uh, instrument available called as an explant system. You do not do anything without explant. Made a dictum, dictum. 
if your boss is operating also you can tell your boss that sir without Islam system we cannot operate people in this country have damaged quite a bit of asset development not using an explant system explant system so you need explant system so uh, what i did i used explant system many many years back actually i'm, I'm very happy that uh, vikram allowed me to buy this system at that time and i could use it and i hardly any bone uh, damage was taken place even though the system was new at that time to me also and to the country also and then i use the nicely antiverted cup i use it around 40 degrees and look at the follow this is not for now it is she's almost 8 10 years follow up of this lady fantastic job done so you need explant system this is the explant system exactly it takes 10 minutes to take out it has got the short liver short uh, chisel first we use the short chisel all around then we use a long chisel raised going to that and then just rotate rotate completely 360 degrees the whole cup comes out without any difficulty before that if there are screws inside you have to take out the screws don't forget so third one now so first was stable second was stable but mal aligned now third is unstable so you don't worry so you straight forward revisions so this is an example osteolysis loose cup loose cup both ap lateral and then uh, put a, a nice morselized graft and a cup uh, into her slightly horizontal position horizontal position and that's the way uh, the third type is so this is one more example of uh, osteolysis cemented cup of my own patient and this is the morselized graft and you saw the trochanter uh, trochanteric area the osteolysis you can do what is called instead of graft in cemented you put a re-cemented I did actually 10 or 15 cases, I don't know what has happened to them, but you re-cement this area so that uh, you stop osteolysis coming inside that graft area. So this is a re-cementing of metafacial lesion by cement, you can do that. But not in uncemented, cemented hips you can do it. And the other thing is, if there's a massive osteolysis, look at the ischium, it's eaten up, literally. And it's migrated superiorly, so uh, migrated almost more than 2 cm. So either you put a graft, autogenous graft, or you put a uh, put a wedge, a trabecular wedge. In olden time, we didn't had a 2013. There was no trabecular wedge available. Uh, 2004, sorry, 2004. And that time I was in Mumbai, so I used the autogenous. Uh, uh, we had a frozen graft, frozen bank at uh, Bombay Hospital, and I used the graft. So this is 2013 follow up, and this patient is still doing well. And that's a, that's the intraoperative picture of that patient. And this bulk graft, we actually don't use much now. It is, we use a slightly smaller graft because bulk, larger the graft, uh, at 10 years, the, uh, the uh, follow-up rate, uh, follow rate is not that good. It is 40% uh, survive, 60% failure after 15 years. But important is, you have to put a graft properly. Put your trabeculae. See this trabeculae of the head? They should be in the same direction. Don't put horizontal. Clear? Secondly, you require good fixation and the screw sure screw should be toward the sacroiliac joint two should be shoot toward the sacroiliac joint look at this they must go toward the sacroiliac don't put horizontal screws they, the screw should go toward the sacroiliac and trabecular orientation and these graphs they survive at least for 10 years you can do again if you need but today it is possible for us to use the trabecular metal and this is one of my own patient so uh, now they were available and then i use the uh, trabecular wedge and i put a cup there and you see this they're beautifully beautifully done with the trabecular instead of graph you can do put a trabecular wedge but they are expensive depends on the what is the pocket of the patient so the new direction for orthoplastic surgeons are Look for alternative bearing to reduce the wear particle. Now today, cross-link poly has come to our rescue, but we still don't know. Time is going to tell us. There's a lot of work going on drug to stop the cytokinin. Genetic engineering, which I told you, uh, unfortunately, we are not able to do it much because certain patients, in spite of massive wear, have not produced osteolysis. Why? So there's something genetic which is there. And some of the patient with a minor wear, like an ankylosing, very high wear. 
So entry implemented drugs have been tried. In those uh, PG uh, PG E two blocker has been tried. Bifosphonate have been some promising. I used to use this now, uh, but uh, I almost stopped using. Instead of that, I started using Dimethyltryptamine, the rankle ligand inhibitor. So which I told you, rankle is the one which is making havoc. Can you stop that? So this is the drug, Dimethyltryptamine will stop rankle inhibitor and is an inhibitor. And how it works? How it works? Uh, XGAV target and binds to the rankle ligand, preventing activation of receptor. This is the receptors. It does not allow to touch there. So sorry. It does not allow the to get into the receptor. So once it doesn't get onto the receptor, it will not go to osteoclast. On osteoclast, it does not allow that the, uh, the inhibition takes place. So it prevents the activation at recept at the receptor level itself. That that drug. Second, by binding to rankle ligand, as inhibits the osteoclast formation, function, and its survival. So it does not allow to get into the receptor. Uh, even then, it will stop the osteolytic uh, osteolytic. So it got three actions. One is here, second is here. Third action, it prevents the maturation of osteoclast. It does not allow itself, and secondly, it does not allow the match to mature the osteoclast. It stops the immaturation of the osteoclast and decrease the bone resorption and breaking the vicious cycle of bone destruction. So at three level, it does this drug acts. We have started using, but we don't have a large experience. There is a lot of experience in giant cell tumor uh, with the tumor surgeons, which we have learned from them. The details of the drugs, uh, how many doses, and all other things. You will have to go to the literature a little bit on the literature, uh, and usually there are four doses required. And what is the take-home message for us? Osteolysis is a silent disease. CT scan is a gold standard for his detection, so you can know where exactly whether the pelvic dissociation has taken place, what is the size of the lesion. He has classified according to you can graft or you can don't don't graft, depend on the size volume of the lesion. And when you have a, a, a lytic lesion, you have to do a trapdoor entry, wash with a jet lavage or syringe, take out the debris, use a funnel. Graft it because you need a good packing. Use image and inspire because that's the only way you to know that you have broken all the septas. Otherwise, they are not. It is always underestimated. Polyware is significantly high in uncemented. That's why that is another important thing. Highly highly cross poly has come to our rescue, but it is not even. People have started reporting osteolysis because these particles are nano size. They are taken by the phagocyte, microphages, and the whole cycle starts. Revise them early before pelvic dissociation or periprosthetic fracture. That's why all patients who are operated for uncemented or cemented after seven years, they should come for regular follow-up of once a year or maybe maximum once in two year, uh, once in two year, and that is very very important to pick up the osteolysis. Otherwise, we are going to have havoc. Uh, new drugs may be promising modality for the treatment, which I told you. We still don't know. We don't have enough data across the world, not in the country, across the country. And if you want to go through, there are some uh, articles which are there. I have mentioned the article's name, so you can go through the articles. You can read. Uh, you can go in much more detail. These are eight or ten articles, very good articles. Uh, you can download them and read. Them. Yeah, you can go through this. I thank you for your attention and patience. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, one more thing for uh, residents appearing for theory exam in uh, DNB. Uh, osteolysis is a most potential question to be asked in 10 marks. Full, full, full question. And uh, it will be a bonus question if it has been asked you in exam, practical exam, by us. So make a note make thoroughly go thoroughly through osteolysis and be clear about it and any queries any doubts are most welcome in our group okay sir thank you very much sir thank you very much thank you for your effort sir left of osteolysis i don't think yeah. anybody has a like this yeah sir whole topic has been cleared sir thank you very much sir
Okay. Thank you. Bye. Okay. We'll meet tomorrow, sir. We'll meet tomorrow. Okay. 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 okay.